everybody. Welcome to Prep Talk Live. We are here uh, as, well, I would say as usual, but hey, it's been hit or miss or whatever, but we're here this week. It's Wednesday. It's Prep Talk Live. Um, I'm getting a really weird error message that uh, it says something is wrong with my YouTube, but that's all right. We'll figure uh, it out. We'll I, cross I, our fingers. I had, I had a weird message too. I don't know. They're, they're trying to shut us down already. So. Yeah, exactly. We're already, you know what? We've already gone rogue and we haven't even started yet. But we, I see we've Titus always been very, here. yeah, Titus is here. We could, yeah, Titus is here. So that means the YouTube is working. I yeah. see people on the little streamy eyeball thing that they're here. Uh, Pony Girl is here. Uh, so yeah, so we, it, it's working. It's, you know, it's given us a little bit of a, it gave us a little scare, but hey, we're in business now. Um, welcome in, everybody. It's episode 35 of prep talk live i'm casey with cascadia dispatch as usual and joining me as always the incomparable uh the urban prepper tup what is going on how is your week how are things what's going on what's uh, new in your world yeah things are going good i'm on uh week uh week three of my inter intermittent fasting uh have you eaten uh, yet uh, i did i had lunch and i prepared the jennifer aniston famous <laughs> tiktok salad and i did some meal preps for it so <laughs> So how many uh, how many layers of trends and fads can you put on top of yeah. one one idea? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to build on top of it as I go. So <laughs> it's a uh, yeah, it's it's like a quinoa with chickpea and feta cheese and all sorts of other goodness stuff. And I guess it's what she ate every day on the set of Friends for lunch. And so I'm trying. If it could work for Jennifer Anderson, it has to work for the herb prepper so <laughs> will there will there be a video of you making said salad with the jennifer aniston wig well i uh the, the yeah that's right like, uh, I, just, I don't i don't know i see i i was thinking about it because i always think look at stuff from a prepping mindset and uh you know i don't know how to do how to, i don't know how to prep feta cheese that's the part i could prep everything else in it though. well no yeah i i could grow the some of the things like the cucumber there's cucumber and there's uh onion but I don't know how to, I don't know how to do long-term uh, feta cheese preps. So. Yeah, modern day prepper is already launched. Yeah, I said bougie prepper. It is bougie. Yeah, prepper. Exactly. Yeah, if you're making feta cheese, I mean, come on. Let's <laughs> it's the American single slices. Let's make that happen. Yeah. Um yeah, I think that's that's an interesting one. The the feta cheese thing. I I don't know. I mean, people I in cheese Greece in general all... is hard. To, cheese in general I think is hard to prep unless you want like some Velveeta uh government cheese or something, but yeah, or you have like a cow and you know how to make it. That's true, yeah. Or, or a sheep or a goat. I mean, there's all different kinds of cheeses. Um, but you'd have to be like a cheese maker person and have all of that equipment, which I think would be it would be a great skill set to have during the apocalypse. Like, uh, you want to have if you can make cheese, I think people are going to want it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you can make cheese, then you know you're in business. If yeah. if you can't, um, I was actually thinking that is going to tie into the question that we have that we're going to talk about uh here in a minute the topic of the night the financial preparedness uh that cheese making thing is going to come in real handy and you don't even know it yet so yeah. and i, put a I also got a, i also got a new knife uh from ben banters uh so see you're very fancy you know lots of fun people and they send you lots of fun things yeah so i i what? think i'm gonna I, I need to do a review video now. So is yeah. that his new one? Because he like makes his own he like made his own it's a new one yeah his it's own thing the, the langer Langer. So, anyway, oh, uh, very cool. All right. Well, time, so. yeah. Shout out to Ben Banters uh, for sending Tup a knife. Um, yes. Shout out to Ben Banters for not sending me a knife. <laughs> yep. Shout out to Ben Banters oh, wow. for not joining the live stream to talk yeah. about the knife. Um, we should do interviews like that uh, or something. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, you know, there should be some interviews that we do with the people that we know because we know some people. And we should have interviews with them. Yeah, I think we should. All right, we'll put that on the to-do list, along okay. with all the videos that we think we should do and all of the <laughs> Most other things that we have. Yeah. yeah, exactly. How's the team coming along? Have we assembled a team yet? I feel like we, we have need a, a team. We have a very strong team, I think. That's uh... Exactly. Can, is Canadian Prepper, like, does he, like, could we maybe buy his team at the Canadian, like, at the, the I, don't know, I don't know if we have it. I don't know if we have it in our budget. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, I know he has a big team, but I mean, he is also paying them in Canadian dollars, and so I would That's imagine true. exchange rate sort of a thing. Like, maybe we can, maybe they would be in our in our price range at this. Point. Maybe he uh, phase in uh, like prepping swag or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try something. I'll pay like you in, in, in currency, but I'll give you uh, number ten cans of Mountain House <laughs> or something. <laughs> the the prepper is gold, as it were. Yes, in the ten cans. That's fantastic. Um, so yeah, so what so what's going on in the in the prepping? Would have you pr any projects other than the fact that you don't eat half the day? Uh, for let's see, for pre well, we're, right now we're prepping for Halloween, is <laughs> to, to be perfectly honest. But we're also <laughs> trying to wrap up our my my wife is has is on the home stretch of hot peppers that are incredibly hot for us to eat, and she has been making more and more jam. I don't know what we're gonna do with all this pepper jam that we have because it's it's incredibly <laughs> spicy. Uh, no one could eat the raw peppers and she's just like, she's pressure cannon like crazy right now. So, but if we're on the home stretch of that now, we have to figure out, okay, what's okay. our, we have to, she's digging up tubers of dahlias and all sorts of other, she's, she's taken <laughs> over. She's, she's, uh, <laughs> she's out prepping the prepper. Is she happening. is out prepping right now. So, and uh, she doesn't want me to touch any of her, her, her supplies either. So <laughs> she's like, leave me alone. I'm in charge now. You had your yeah. good run. Um, do, yeah, do you had to run. A, your, yeah, your days are over. <laughs> yeah, do we need a channel for her now? Like, like the Mrs. Uh, Urban Prepper. She and... doesn't. She doesn't like. Uh, well, first off, it, it's uh, there'd be a lot of profanity in it. <laughs> yeah, so it'd get banned I, pretty quick. I, I feel like it would be a runaway hit. I feel uh, like it's good that she doesn't have a channel because it gives some of the rest of us hope. Well, like, she doesn't want also. Might... She doesn't want to be on camera either or talk. So I don't, it's, it's it's that's <laughs> that's kind of tough for the channel. <laughs> Now, is this is this just for prepping, or is this just life in general? Like, she doesn't choose to talk to you, or she the children, know. or anything. She just only wants to yell profanities. Yeah, and... just the online presence stuff. Like, that's okay, more low key. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm. Uh, some of the projects that I'm working on are just more uh, some EDC related things. Kind of, it's, I think it's time for uh, to to up, do a little minor minor tweaks and updates. Also working on some so some of the kits and everything like that. Reevaluating nice. that. So, but that's that's nice. kind of ongoing stuff. What about now, are you video? planning this? Are you planning this for a video that we will never that you will never make? <laughs> It'd be so easy if I could just do like one take type videos <laughs> where I didn't do all the fancy uh, all fancy stuff. Or I, I need to be better on the one takers, but. Yeah, I've been I've been thinking about that. That like there's I find that there are a lot of people on YouTube that make videos that are very highly produced and are almost kind of like archival like a lot of the videos i think that you make when you're putting a lot of effort and, and like they're ones that are like reference videos like they're for the, yeah. like the encyclopedia britannica of youtube prepping things of like these are going to never become old like they will always be useful yeah, I think and, that's the kind of the goal is to have a be. I think uh, Canadian Prepper calls them uh, evergreen videos. So they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're evergreens. Yeah, and then you got the people that are like, "Hey, here's what's happening. And I'm just going to use my phone and do that." And um, then they go bananas, and you're like, yeah. "But I spent nine hours making a video that people will actually use, as opposed to this other thing." But yeah. um, anyway, all right. So a couple things, and actually your Halloween candy thing brought up another topic that we're going to insert in here because we have a very rough plan, and yep. sometimes we do this That's on the best time. We always have good ideas when the rough plans are. Exactly. So one of the things, so two topics for tonight. One topic was I was in a Facebook group uh, for preppers, um, and a person in there was asking about financial preparedness she was like hey i've i've gotten to the point now where i have a little bit of extra cash and i'm trying to figure out how to think about financial literacy and investing and saving and things but also with a little bit of a prepper mindset which i thought was an interesting question and i was like i could write pages on this you should just come to the live stream and we'll talk about it there um i may actually make some videos on this one because i just enjoy the finance part of life and then also the preparedness part of it but yeah. i figured it'd be an interesting thing to talk about tonight and then the second thing that i think would be fun and timely is halloween and kind of you had said you're prepping for halloween i often find that there are some interesting opportunities with halloween to test out prepping gear and test out prepping ideas and i'm curious if you also do the same thing uh, so yeah. which order do you want to take them do you want to do finances first or halloween first well i've always like uh... Try not to. I, we don't give legal or financial advice. So yeah, we internet. don't. So I've always been pretty conscious of that. So I don't even know. If we I'm have the best we to have Legos and Funko Pops. We are not uh, financial planners. 
uh, we have many disclaimers. Yeah, don't don't I think do in, anything that we say. In the whole prepping genre, I think like some of like the uh, view repellent is uh, one like personal fitness. I think we talked about that, that no <laughs> yeah. one watches this one. So then like personal finance, like those are ones that aren't the pot. Those are like probably the most important ones, like your health and your finance, but are, are the least like uh, catchy, I guess. It's exactly. Catch. They're not as fun say. as gear and stuff. Uh, or just like scary stuff, like scary top as well. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I, I could go Halloween type stuff because I, I do. We, right. <laughs> I, I, my, we had a, a lot of. I don't know if you do truck or treat or with the kids, but uh, we, we've been we're actually using a lot of prepping supplies for some of our truck or treat type stuff. So it gives me a chance to test out some of the batteries that we have for uh, power outages and uh, and uh, it's yeah. So I'll try to think what other some various light lighting and stuff that I that I test out for for Halloween. We put on a big. A big thing where like over a thousand kids come over and I jump out of the bushes as Leatherface and with a chainsaw and I that's the only time of the year I get to do that and not get arrested for it. But I was going to uh, say, tell me again about your prison time. Yeah, yeah. So so far <laughs> the cops are in on it. So the cops like will come <laughs> and with their lights on and then Leatherface they'll come after Leatherface and they arrest Leatherface and then Leatherface breaks out. <laughs> and then chases kids, and they're all they get a big kick out of it, and it's and it's just me, <laughs> me having fun. So uh, that has nothing. To, I know that has nothing to do with prepping. Just but. you having fun, terrifying children, and you know, working yeah. with the cops to not get arrested. <laughs> but, it, but I I use a lot of like my prepping type props for this whole event with regard to certain batteries and certain uh, type of lighting and uh, other gear, some of the gear that I wear and stuff like that. Kevlar lined gloves. <laughs> so. Kevlar lined gloves. You've got like, you've got like, the, like the battery clips from like the torture scenes that are like, yeah, like exactly. the clips from the batteries. And then like Kevlar, you are wearing your mirror mask. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah we have, we, have we did. Yeah. During like the heart of COVID, like we, uh, uh, the height of COVID. Sorry, uh, we had we did uh, Mira safety hazmat suits. Everyone was in <laughs> hazmat suits for it, which we had our masks on too. So uh, it, it was more of like the pandemic uh, Halloween. Uh, maybe people didn't think it was funny, but we thought we thought. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, hey, and as long as you're enjoying it, yeah, like it that's that's the important thing. Um, yeah, I think one of the things I thought was always fun about Halloween was doing the like flashlights, and we would always do like yeah cool flashlights we have the bucket flashlight from nebo um yep. nebo has really cool flashlights. i like things. nebo yeah yeah like i don't know that they're like a lot of people like olight and streamlight and all those kind of things for like the big time flashlights mm -hmm. but like nebo has some really cool like random um oh the bots are here we've reached the threshold oh did we get 20, some bots uh, oh nice. we have we have lots of bots and they're looking for love um oh, cool. great so i'm blocked oh nice yeah exactly <laughs> we did it we, we reached the threshold um but I, they have some cool ones like the one that you can put around like a coffee mug thing is kind of fun um mm -hmm. but they also have one that's a bucket and it's a collapsible bucket with a light in the front and a light in the bottom so as you're walking around trick-or-treating you have a light and it lights your path sort of a thing um so it's a good opportunity to like test out those kind of random more specific lights that we have um <laughs> glow sticks are always fun and that sort of thing um but i also like to try to test out like the walkie talkies uh um, yeah so like the, the family radios we're not busting out the hams and cbs and all that sort of thing but like just your standard kind of like motorola or i don't know whatever kind midland or whatever um standard gmrs or or family band um and let the kids go you know a block or two ahead of you especially if you're in your neighborhood and you can see them um but it lets them kind of again get used to and comfortable with using that sort of of equipment without it being super scary emergency time and it also gives you a pretty good idea of like okay what is the range and distance of this sort of communication if i if i needed yeah. it yeah i think it's fun for like a lot of like uh any kind of events or things that you buy for non-prepping purposes. It's, I, it, I always try to get stuff for, that has dual purpose. So, uh, so some of the outfits that we have, like I, I have like a, a leather face bib and I, but I, I use it also for some other things and it goes in actually after Halloween, it goes into a certain prepping module and I have a Halloween, tell me, I have a Halloween module. So. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, first off, hold on timeout. Speaking of, of the bots that we have, tell me about what it is that you use the leather face costume parts for, during the rest of the year 
Well, I have the Kev <laughs> I have the police quality Kevlar lined gloves for to keep my hands warm as Leatherface, but it's there. I think they're awesome gloves that uh, protect your hands for uh, you know uh, emergency situations. I have the chainsaw, which I think is uh, the uh, it's kind of the 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 multi tool for the apocalypse, like because you could. Uh, like if there's an earthquake or something like that, you're going to want to have that chainsaw to help clear debris from uh, roads and things like that. So the chainsaw comes into play for uh, for prepping and all the kind of uh, the maintenance supplies that are needed for that extra chains, even though I take the chain off for leather face. But uh, <laughs> and I have I have both a gas one and I have an electric one. Uh, and those are part of that. Uh, for the apron part, I thought that goes into my pandemic preparedness type stuff. So I have uh, kind of like the Walter White. Uh, crystal meth making uh aprons, I guess. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah modern day prepper it would would like to remind everyone that the secret prepper has a secret. secret um i was more assuming that it was for the times when you piss off miss prepper and she yeah. decides now that she's gonna throw pepper jam at your face that you would have some sort of protective you know thing on um around the house yeah. In case things get out of control, she just starts flinging ghost chili things and it's sticking to your skin that you would have some sort of protection for that. Yeah, well, she's making that spicy pepper, like, uh, again, from the home guard, container garden peppers. I mean, it's everyone's eyes are watering in the house, so it's, uh, it's pretty extreme. <laughs> uh, but I also carry some uh, pepper gel with me. It's, for, it's part, I changed my EDC for Halloween, so I have a Halloween mm -hmm. EDC, but because sometimes you have like teenage kids that want to they think that you're really leather face or whatever and they want to act cool and stuff so it's good to have some protection and stuff so i like that you you provoke them by trying to scare them and then you're like oh but wait a minute they might think i'm real and, so yeah, and I'm yeah we don't I, we don't really scare the i we don't scare the really little kids and we don't scare the the older kids like hey dude what are you doing? why are you out trick-or-treating with no costume <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> like we're not it's I'm not this isn't for you so it's more for like the, the certain age range but God. um i upgraded I'm, some uh some overalls some coveralls for some of the costumes so uh for mike myers has a certain color coverall and those go back into my prepping cl clothes for you know for, for certain things so and then i also have some chemical i have i have some chemical boots that i also use for uh it's, it's for my prepping pandemic uh cbrn equipment but they also get uh, i'm able to use it for halloween so it gets a I chance to try stuff out I love that you've caveated every item that you have with, and I use it for certain things. Yeah. Like certain things is in quotation marks, and we're just all wondering what those certain things are. <laughs> every, every, every prepper has to have their own secrets. So. <laughs> Happy anniversary, darling. Let me go get the uh, the coveralls. That's, that's what's happening tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've got the chainsaw and the uh, the leather apron. This it's is time something Casey romance. should have costume showing. Yeah, I, yes, I could I could put on my leather face mask. I could, but uh, I have it handy. So yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I I yeah, I don't have a costume. I haven't done I I, I haven't done a costume in uh, since the kids were really little. We did like a superhero, like a Justice League family thing. Yeah, um, like seven or eight years ago. Um, I think that was the last time I did. Oh, no, 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 no. I did a costume like two years ago. Um, and it was, it was part of the, um, it was, uh, we did a costume party for Halloween and, uh, there had been some very negative comments about some of my videos. And, uh, there was a, uh, there was a name that some, some people were calling me because I had, Legos and Funko Pops mm -hmm. and stuff. And so people did not take me seriously, which is fine. They probably shouldn't. Um, and and so I, I made a, a costume out of out of that. And I went as that for Halloween. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was it was what I think also for Halloween, this is like the time. I think it's important for your like your your long-term food storage to have some candy on hand. And so we usually have a buffer of candy from the previous and we use that for the year for our emergency candy uh i think it's good for morale purposes so and yeah, halloween's mm -hmm. the time that we kind of stock up on that so i remember during like in 2020 and 2021 as well we uh, uh we were doing some candy investments for just in case uh just in case type stuff so it's shtf candy so yeah i so so pony girl said she can only imagine what tup would be like and she has no idea what i would be 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Um, but you know what? Hey, I, I appreciate it also. Um, yeah, there's more. Co- yeah, no one has any idea what I would be. I would be some sort of, I don't know, we'll come up with something. Now I have to come up with something, I feel like. Um, and, and Pony Girl, yeah, I, I think there may have been a, there may be a picture of it. I have to find it um, and see. If if there is, I'll I'll share it with the group. Um, Pig, Pig's Fly also is curious, what color coveralls would uh, being with your wife be? Like, are uh, they, are they like, they have like hearts on them? Like, <laughs> like boxers? Are they more of like a clear, like, like PVC sort of material? Well, the coveralls I have, like, uh, so, and I, th- these are my gray ones for her, for Leatherface. And then I also yeah. have uh, more, these are all nice quality ones. These are, this is the, the Mike Myers one. And this, after this is done, it goes into my clothing module again but uh i don't i have to, I, i'm not too picky on the colors with it yeah uh big uh, big ross uh has has one he thinks that i would dress up as a brony and here's the deal pinky pie for sure a hundred percent yes that would probably be something i would do um that's also probably something that would you know if i ever went back to montana again would feed into the, the my return experience to there which you know nobody needs to have that happen <laughs> um let's see um oh here we go yeah. prairie prepping would say that she would pay to see it um uh, or at least she would watch it on youtube and let google pay us so you know what i like the fact that you're that oh, we're wow. finding uh interesting revenue generating options for us um uh, and we will definitely take that under advisement of that maybe maybe it's an only fans Maybe do we need a do we need a, a, a <laughs> an need only to. preps an only preps uh um a, a mostly friends something like that we could come up with that I, you're at the I, Patreon I'm, for a while yeah I, I I like uh I like dressing up in costume when I can so I, I see Pony Girls <laughs> talking about the the pans that I yeah that was a <laughs> that was a fun <laughs> one so. actually I have a few costumes within almost I could almost grab them right here I have one over there too and I. I, I'm known to carry mullets in my in my underwear drawer. I have probably three different mullets because I like every once in a while just busting them out. So <laughs> it's part of my gray man uh, disguise for for prepping. So it's for is, is, are they mullets or merkins? I don't. I'm, I'm a <laughs> bit curious. You said they're in your underwear drawer, and like we can only then. Uh, it's got preps after dark. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Secret prepping. <laughs> um, after dark. <laughs> with um. After dark. <laughs> Um, yes, I see some uh, friends in here. Uh, I see Fenom, bring... Phenom, the musician fitness trainer. That's good, good to see him. That, so. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, let's see, words whole... out of my mouth only preps. Yeah, only preps. Yes. That's funny. Only preps. Only preps. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's a, I think that's maybe a t shirt or something. I don't know. It's a sticker. It's a something. We'll find out. I like um, if, if there was like a preppers only fans, like what would you, what would you want to hire the preppers for on those kind of things? Like, and who would be the best <laughs> preppers to have on only fans? I don't know. I don't, you, so yeah. So it's the, the problem is I think with that is there is an assumption about what would be happening yeah. on only fans. And there is no one that wants to see most preppers. I think oh. in that situation, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I think there is there are certain people like with Patreon. I know there are a bunch of preppers, including yourself, who took the opportunity to put content on Patreon that yeah. maybe wouldn't have been approved in YouTube, um, in the YouTube land of things. Yep. Um, but I feel like OnlyFans, although OnlyFans continues to say that like they want to have creators that are not necessarily uh adult uh content creators um i don't know of many people that like i I don't see other creators having an only fans that's not that yeah i i mean i think for preppers yes it's probably best to stick with uh uh patreon and Mm -hmm. subscribe star one of the other ones but uh yeah, that's that's one of the markets that I don't think the prepper the preparedness community has branched out to. We're we're going to TikTok, we're going to Patreon, yeah. we're going we're going on Twitter, <laughs> we're on Instagram. We we haven't hit that market yet, and it's probably for the best. So. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, think, I, don't even, I, I you know I don't even know what it. I, I, to be honest, I have never even like typed in the URL, so I have no idea what what goes on there. But I I've only heard. Sure, of sure. In your mullet underwear drawer, yeah, we're all <laughs> we're all believing it with your coveralls of romance. And, <laughs> That's funny. and your certain uses of modules. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. we are all buying it. Yes. yes. Yeah, I have uh, a Halloween module. I have a Christmas module. What other modules? You have an OnlyFans module. No, I don't. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to type rumors. <laughs> hey, you know what? Sequins are nothing to be ashamed of. Um, anyway, uh, Pony Girl wants to remind everyone to smash the like button. We appreciate yeah. that. It it does let other people know about the stream. It lets YouTube know that you know we're talking about things that people might be interested in. Um, I actually had somebody message me the other day, super annoyed with me. And they were totally within their right to be annoyed with me because I have been very lax in getting these episodes turned around into podcast episodes oh. and getting the audio up. Um, and there were some people who apparently listened to us on long car rides and were very annoyed that we didn't have more episodes. So I just want to let everyone know I am going to spend some time this week and cut up more of them and get them posted. Um, I was trying to kind of cut them up and, Get them posted like one a week and try to maybe do two a week and catch up. Um, but I think I'm just going to put a big kind of batches of them up because we have, I think, 35 episodes and and oh, wow. I think we've posted five of them. So I have about 30 more that we've got to get up there and, and get out there. So in the meantime, if it's something you would be interested in uh, and you've held back because, you know, I don't know, um, go ahead. Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Um, I think everywhere but Spotify because they have some weird rules and stuff. But we're on all those things. Go ahead and, and subscribe. Hit the like button over there. Um, and then also stay here because we enjoy having you guys on our uh, on our live streams. Yeah, uh, I was. I saw that uh, going back to kind of uh, prepping type stuff. I saw yesterday mm -hmm. I saw that there was an earthquake over in uh, – uh, California area, maybe not the it's yes, not, that big of one, but I'm always I'm always worried about that on my end as far as uh, uh, earthquake yes. preparedness type stuff. And then I know it's also coming up into the winter time, and it's usually the time of the that time of the year that preppers like talking about uh, winter preparedness. So that's probably good, some good topics for us to dive into. Soon. I I love that idea. I also like how you're coming up with your own topics instead of going to the financial one because I you know I appreciate that. Oh, I, well, I, we can talk about the financial one, but I'm just gonna uh, I, I'm gonna play no. it super safe. So yeah, no, no. What we'll do is I will do that as a separate thing. Um, because I don't I don't pretend to be a financial analyst person or anything else, but I do feel like I have some things that I've done and I'm happy to share those with people as like, Hey, this is what I've done and how I think about it. Um, so I will do that separately. Yeah, because um, I mean, because I spend my money on mullets and costumes, so I don't know if I'm the best. Exactly, person. exactly. <laughs> you, you're trying to get that Merkin money is what yeah. you're trying to do. <laughs> That's funny. That is 100%. I don't know. Yeah, San Francisco 5.1. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, one of the my people yeah. I work, work with, they said, hey, uh, I'm going to be offline for a little bit. We just had an earthquake. And then I, then my you know, prepper, ding, ding, ding. Oh, okay, thanks. That's a, I'll spy your I earthquake love, preps. I love how casual Californians are about it, too. Like, oh, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to be offline for like 45 yeah. minutes or so. The ground was just shaking beneath our feet. I have to just see what's going on, and then I'll be back. Did I, did um, I ever tell you my story about like in – the, the last earthquake in Washington was like in 2000, 2001. Uh, did I ever tell you the story about what? Uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell it to you. I'll, I'll tell it to whoever's watching too. So, uh, okay. yes. Yeah. So uh, we had one. It was like a 6.7, maybe. It was really deep. And so it, it, it was, I mean, it was the, the Nisqually uh, earthquake. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I remember I was in the shower uh, when that happened. And then all of it, it sounded like there was a, like a big truck or something driving by, but everything started shaking. And I, and I was, uh, at the time I was living downstairs in my grandma's house, uh, uh, cause I was working at a place that was nearby there. And so I had to run outside with a, with a washcloth on to cover, cover up a little bit. And, and was just totally outside. Uh, uh where yeah. were your mullets? Uh, they, they, I didn't have the mullets at that time. So I had, I had a natural mullet, at, uh, <laughs> But yeah, and uh, it was pretty. Uh, it was definitely scary, and it's definitely it made it's uh, disorienting. But then uh, when we eventually, so that's what that's my one experience with an earthquake that I can remember. But we we have the earthquake latches on. Uh, actually, I get to get it set up on a couple other uh, cabinets. But those latches that auto uh, 
auto close when it detects uh, lateral movement. So, uh, oh, pretty, I don't know if you've seen I, those. But. I I have not. I've seen I've seen the frame uh, mounting things, the shake uh, like quake something, quake up yeah. or shake something or other. Yeah. Um, I think it was something I saw in one of your videos. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're like uh, they're like plastic and they look like a little maze. And so you hang them on the on the uh, when you hang up a, a picture that's super heavy, it holds the wire in. So as the picture moves and shakes, it doesn't come off of of the nail or the screw or whatever. Um, so we I've gotten those and and put them up for a couple of the heavier things that we have on wall oh for like for the big those are the a maze hook or something like that is what i thought it was called yes yeah yeah, yeah. Are, they're like pretty earthquake awesome. hangers yeah i think google earthquake hangers and you should probably find them and they look like little plastic they come in like four in a pack or something yeah it's like it's like i mean it's hard to get that thing out, out of there when once it's yeah. locked in but it, it's definitely locked in for sure so <laughs> exactly it, it works so well you can't actually get it off of the wall if you ever want to do anything with it later on so if yeah. you need to change something or get it off, it requires like two people to try to guide the wire back up and through the, the little hook mount. Yeah, uh, you know the, the the ones that act like the the quake safe the the quake putty uh, is is another mm -hmm. good one for like that small stuff. Those that that stuff works really well. Uh, trying to think what other things the. I'm not a, the straps. I used to use those a lot more. The, the straps that kind of keep things from tilting. I need to. Yeah. What I'm what I need to dive into, and I think the earthquake that happened yesterday is a good reminder to uh, on like for aquarium or earthquake preparedness because we have a few, couple large tanks and it's really hard. Like those straps that are designed for like cabinets and stuff, the cabinets are light compared to aquariums and you know, 150 gallon type tanks. So that has to yeah. go into the studs of the wall, and it's it's a harder to prepare for. So it's it's definitely a gap that I. And you don't want your food preps to just spill out all over the street. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I'm I'm growing my own uh, uh, tilapia or whatever. So. You've got you know lots of people have like you know tropical fish and everything. Tup has tilapia in his yeah. family room, just <laughs> swimming around. Well, just... I, I know a lot of folks they do like the hydroponics for like the true yeah. peppers. Like they're not going to have a normal goldfish tank. They're going to have like uh, the hydroponics <laughs> where with the tilapia and the making their all that stuff so i don't exactly yeah which i think isn't chilean sea bass tilapia or something like that that's There's true something... i have a chilean sea bass uh recipe that it's because i'm a, a half breed puerto rican so i have a, a, a that'd be really great to that's a great idea i should i should get i should talk to my wife into letting me get some tilapia so then i can make a chilean <laughs> sea bass during the apocalypse so i could just see her like you're gonna come downstairs and be like so honey here's the deal i need to get some Chilean sea bass, and we're gonna do aquaponics. And I can just see her turn around with a spoonful of the pepper jelly and just start <laughs> flinging it at you until you retreat. <laughs> yeah, uh, we. I don't know. I forget if I told you how during like the like 2020, like my family was getting into weird hobbies, and one of them was the collecting snails or, or breeding snails. I don't know. Okay, if I told mm -hmm. you that. You did uh, not tell me that you were going to be an escargot farmer. Yeah, and so then people were coming over, and they're like, "Oh, are you guys breeding your own escargot type stuff?" So <laughs> anyway, uh, we're finally those are finally phasing off. It's been a couple years now, but those are going. So I, I'd like to now that I got rid of the snails, we could move over to, to the tilapia then, and I can. Make I, I, yeah, a modern prepper has also again just referred to the escargot as bougie prepping. It uh, is bougie prepping. A, yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the fish That's farms funny. and calls them aquariums. I'm just yeah. like, I'm more curious, like why not sturgeon? Why are we not doing caviar? Why That's are we true. not doing, you know, salmon row? I mean, really, if you're going to do it, I mean, step up the game and let's do it. Let's do yeah, it. All the, the, let's... The, all the, the normal preppers, they like the chickens and the rabbit and stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to do escargot and do to go total bougie preps. Like. <laughs> you get a goat, you can make goat cheese. You know, which comes back to the whole cheese thing from earlier. Yeah. You could do yeah, I don't know cheese how to do with it. your with your escargot and your things. You'd be very French. No one would, <laughs> would think that <laughs> you French, were Puerto French Rican. Pepper. You're just very French. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm only half Puerto Rican, so I, that's... Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> the other half is very French. Yes. It is only the finest of wines. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I see we have Van City Prepper here. That's, that's Yeah, that's awesome. he is. Van City Prepper she, has arrived. Yeah, she... And uh, I see people uh, 
let's see they're talking about the kangol yeah, hat which is here cool. it's, it's just a small aquarium that can feed my entire family yeah <laughs> Perry prepping is uh yeah she's she yeah, that, that, that's a whole thing um <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, yeah, go big or go home. A hundred percent. Like I yeah. I feel like but sturgeon is a next is a next maybe logical. people have ideas for how to earthquake strap a hundred and fifty gallon tank. And let's see, hundred and fifty gallons of how much does a gallon water weigh? I don't know. It's 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 heavy though. So uh isn't it like so eight pounds or something? Something like that. So we're talking yeah. like a thousand pounds. Like you can't use the normal strap. So what do you at one point I was using a 550 paracord wrapped around it a few times and i had it eye bolted into the studs and i think a, 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 some i what i've been thinking about doing is if i could find uh like those those straps that you use on your on your truck for like for tie downs that the oh, ratchet ones, straps i think if i could find some thin black ones and have them somehow attached to around the studs of the wall mm -hmm. i think maybe that would work but maybe someone else has an around idea around the studs so just open up the drywall open and, up the drywall yeah. wow just you really like this aquarium? Like, no, I hate. I hate it. I want. I want them gone. But the, it's a. Well, what, I got. I got to pick my battles. You? I got to pick my battles. So. Okay, so so this is a miss. Like so, Mrs. Prepper has a, a penchant for for the aquarium. Then yeah, uh, I don't know if folks that have watched the channel for a while like remember Tactical Temptress, but Tactical Temptress at years back had my wife fish sit while she was gone on some vacation and and so she was borrowed some little fish tank with a fish in it that my wife liked it and so then she got her own tank and then has been expanding the operation so now we have tanks all over the place uh the, and they're yeah so it's a it's a touchy subject kind of, okay kind of that's fair the best part of this whole thing is that for a while i thought tactical trump just was your wife yeah that's that was the, her own channel yeah um that was then, the yeah the rumors yeah and 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 then that's and and as a result, tactical temptress has never been seen again. That's yes. just she's yeah. a, well, she, she was found a, yeah. with pepper jelly all over her. Yeah, we're tactical temptress is my wife's uh, maid of honor. We're uh, her tactical temptress has a kid, and we're the god the godparents of the kid. And so yeah, it's a oh okay. So yeah, there's so a whole she's the godmother of our kids and all those things. So okay, uh, so prepping, good, good friends. Prepping apparently runs in the family then. Yes. <laughs> so okay. Brad is Brad from Full Spectrum Survival used to breed rats and tough breed snails. That is funny. I wonder how much protein is in a snail. But I don't know. Call Brad. He probably he, knows. He, 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 he probably exactly. He knows. Brad, do you feed the snails to the rats? Like, is that a? I did well, not Brad, know that that Brad had rats. Yeah. Like, well, and he has it figured out. Like, it's. I thought it was pretty amazing where his plan for feeding the dogs is to feed him a rat every day. And he says, you could, you could breed the rats really quickly and you just have to feed a, a rat, like one dog food pellet per day for it to live, to grow and live and stuff. So that's his like long, long-term dog food plan. So wow. I mean, so I was like, man, I've never feel that's next level stuff. I haven't even thought of that. So. That is, that is some straight up survivor season one stuff right there. That yeah, is... but I need to look up how many calories are in, or how much protein is in a in a snail because those things, man, they uh they they reproduce just hey, just like rats, it seems. So. Yeah, Big Ross, uh feed the snails to the ducks. Nice. So yeah, I could so use snails for yeah, for and uh I, I guess I what would be interesting for me is I another thing that I've seen a lot of preppers that that go uh, I would say, I would say it's hardcore. It's just very creative and clever, but like, I don't have the ability to do it or the stomach to do it um, where they're doing rabbits. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I would be curious if, which is the more efficient? Cause they, they break it down to efficiency of like the amount of inputs and outputs and calorie per, you know, hay fed and all of that sort of stuff. Like would a rabbit be more, efficient or efficient? that's a good question i, I they both you, you know when you say this uh, like the phrase you breed like rabbits is what they do yeah but i'm trying to figure out how many how many are in a is it called a litter when it's like a rabbit or a, i don't know what it is that yeah it's um, a it's a whatever it is there should but be like, a, someone needs to come up brad should probably come up with the video like rabbits versus rats in the yeah you know, which which one to go with i think the uh, I think most people would probably have it. It'd be harder for them to to whack a rabbit than it would be to whack a rat. But I think more they'd be more likely to eat a rabbit than they would a rat. I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I, I would also be concerned about things like the rats getting into other food stores. Yeah, 
you know, if they got out or something. Um, I don't know if if diseases in rats are still a thing. Like if that's an easily transmittable, like with mosquitoes and things, if that's like if you're opening yourself up to a different level of vulnerability there versus a rabbit. Um, and I know there are different types of breeds of rabbits of, you know, if you're doing meat rabbits, so you're doing mm -hmm. Uh, fur rabbit, milk, milk, milk rabbits, milk rabbits. Exactly, <laughs> they're just like the chickens. <laughs> Only the finest of milk comes from the milk rabbits. <laughs> Can you milk me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Sorry. No. laughs> milk funny. rabbits, milk chickens, and yeah, the whole—that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those, it's like your toilet paper thing. It's like someone went out and figured out exactly how many toilet paper rolls to get for a person over time. And now we all judge our, our toilet paper stocks based off of Tup's Costco nice. That's thing. Great. And I feel like it's the same thing with like the, the, the rabbits and the rats. And it's like, okay, so what is the calorie intake and the amount of dog food versus uh, forage? versus like all of that and that'd be a whole thing someone uh let's see dr dave ac says snails have more protein than beef 150 grams portion has 34 grams of protein for snails 27 for beef oh man see that so my wife is my wife is next level prepping on some exactly of per google preps. at least so yeah, yeah. So that's so you know what else so we have a source now as well yeah uh we like to we always like to cite our sources um yeah i've heard that a lot of times that beef is not as efficient like a lot of people have it but it's not as efficient if you're thinking about like a an emergency situation or something like that yeah but, and it'd be easy for me to have a whole bunch of snails and even one cow would be really rough yeah. like my, my neighbors would be ticked <laughs> off if we had a cow <laughs> be really annoyed about the cow needless to say the snails have eaten all of their gardens like they yeah. just multiplied everywhere well they're, they're the in their own we have a snail tank and that they're in there and they we we also have like the nurse this well i don't again it's a touchy subject but we have yep. the snail nursery where the babies are at there and it's my daughter she's like the how, how is this the, not a video She's the snail whisperer where she has them all on her and like, <laughs> like the Pied Piper of snails. <laughs> it should be a video probably. <laughs> yeah. Did you actually turn them into escargot or did you just you breed never... them for the sake of breeding snails? My It's my daughter's project and she's breeding them for the sake of breeding snails. So uh, okay. she, she right. likes it. All uh, right. I, I find them to be pests, but uh, again, I'm trying to pick my battles on some things. But... <laughs> It seems like you're losing a lot of battles. Yeah, I, snails and fish tanks and all kinds of things. I'm losing They're some fine. battles. Hopefully, I win the yeah. war. We'll see. <laughs> exactly. No wonder you have all of your prepping stuff in your office. That's actually the only place you can have it's, it. Your costumes. It's, it's, it's my safe your... space. It's my safe space. That I can, <laughs> your I be, yeah, I have my chainsaw, my expandable rake, and I have like you know, random, random stuff within close by. I don't know. There it goes. Yeah. Uh, Coconut Shrimp Taco asks if, if well, first off, we just lost your camera. If oh. this is about fi financial preparation. And that's a fantastic question. Um, we had planned for this to be uh, about some financial preparation things. Um, as with most of our streams, we have taken a hard left turn in a different direction. Um, and we are going to postpone that topic. There will be uh, another live stream uh, here in the next week or so i'll do it um on financial preparation that'll be on cascadia dispatch so it looks like you are on the got preps channel if you go to cascadia dispatch on youtube and hit the subscription button over there um when when i put that together uh that'll get posted out to everybody um so we will do a financial kind of preparation uh live stream but i'll do it separately um just because it's it's how we roll we we try not to we try not to get into the the controversy of things. I, sh I should be back now. I think on camera. You are. You're back. You I, I guess uh, I should I should have my camera actually plugged in for these things so, or the power plugged in. So, I mean, minor details. It minor was going details. on batteries, so it it went on batteries for almost this entire stream plus the last stream, and I just didn't realize that it wasn't plugged in. So, 
Oh, well, you know, hey, that, that's pretty good. That, that, does anyone have any fat? We need like a nutrition guide for these snails. Apparently, that's a well, what? Do, yeah, I guess uh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should encourage the snails, but I don't know if I. I guess I could probably eat a snail. I, I'd have an easier time eating eating snails than killing. Uh, do you uh, enjoy rabbit. French food though? I, I I'm a fan of all food. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, like, if if you liked escargot, then I would say this is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I like I I can't get there. I like in an emergency, I'm sure I could get there. Like on a Tuesday, I don't know that well, I can get there. Yeah, I think you'd have to prepare. It'd be all about the preparation because, like, I don't. I'm not a fan of like cow tongue, for example. But if they slice it really thin, like a like a pho style, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> so uh, I think it's probably some of the preparation is going to be key on that one. Um, Kaylin says that she always plugs into a power bank right before she starts her weekly ration review stream. Oh, okay. Kaylin, I didn't know that you did weekly ration reviews. Yeah, what's the, where's our invite? Well, yeah, exactly. That. Where's what's happening here? Yes. Um, I feel like this is th there could be some synergy here. DM us and let's let's have a conversation about that. <laughs> um, Modern Day Prepper wants to remind you that you need a lot of butter for snails. I, I, yeah, I was thinking yeah. like an olive oil, but yeah, I think yeah, butter. I feel yeah, like but... the, like what I would need there is to take the snail and a lot of butter and then get rid of the snail and put the butter on some bread and eat that. There we go. You know, I mean, it's just a different recipe. Um, you know, <laughs> one gram fat and three ounce portion again from Google. I love how it's our thing went from financial preparedness to the nutritional aspects of <laughs> we, I, yeah, that's, we kind of took a left turn. Left turn. If there was or, ever a question about whether our show was planned and how yeah. it runs, this is the fantastic example. It says rabbit skin hair makes good hats and gloves and slippers for around home. So yeah, so multi I'd rather wear like yeah. a rabbit skin than rat skin. And rat fur, I guess. If if it was, we're talking emergency situations, so yeah, exactly. That's not you know the rats are not the plushest of of creatures. Um, yeah, I think there's there's also an interesting thing in the dual purposeness, kind of like chickens, where you could have meat chicken or egg chicken, yeah, or milk chicken. Um, yeah. with the rabbits, you know, you could have the fur the the fur rabbits or the meat rabbits or the milk rabbits. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh make oh, money what? breeding snails and milking chickens. Yeah, that's that'd be big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of financial preparedness, there we go. It's, it's a side hustle. Breeding milk chickens and snails. Um <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather wear rabbit skin than rat skin. Also, not on the bingo card. <laughs> that is funny. Prairie Prepping, I would love to see your bingo card because I feel like whatever is on it, like, like what did you put on it? Because yeah. if you've been to our streams before, like the things that could possibly be on that bingo card are endless, I yeah. think. Like, I don't know that I'm pretty sure nobody, including myself, had ever thought of Merkin money before, but yeah. that's that's a thing that happened today on our stream. Um. I love all, right. all the, the uh, I think uh, the folks that watch her, it's uh, yeah, mealworms, they're, they're awesome. Mealworms, yeah, tasted like shrimp. Nice. Uh, hey, you know, things taste like chicken or they taste like you know, whatever. Um, it must be a tactical bingo card. Yes, it has molly webbing on it. It has... <laughs> it's like right in rain paper, with like... exactly. It's invisible ink. Yeah, you need the, the UV light. Um, so doing a quick time check, we're right about 625 here. Okay. Uh, Tup, Tup, had to, uh, again, God, you make me like, a, I'm like a schmuck every time I do this. You're like, hey, I have to go in 35 to 45 minutes. I didn't mean, well, I, yeah, and I, I'm I, like, hey, <laughs> Tup, I don't want mom to be pissed. And then you're like, but I could go a little longer. I could go. Don't, you know, don't take me away from the chat. And then I'm I always worried that, that they're going to raid the, the room and, 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 and shut me down like the, the family will. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's see. Didn't they actually make goats that milk silk? What? I'm confused. I, I, I know that worms can make silk. I don't know what that is. And I mean? know that goats can be milked. I don't know that, that milk goats silk can be, can create silk. Uh, I know they can create. And someone is vouching that. I think Prairie uh, Prepping said, Charlie, I think you're right about that. 
Wow. What does I, that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Didn't they actually make goats that milk silk? It's got to have to do something with the with the 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 milk producing some sort of a silk or turning the milk I've never into a silk. Or where's, our, where's our fact checkers on that one? That's yeah, exactly. I don't know what's happening. This is a whole thing. And then someone's talking about silkworms taste like vegetables. Yeah, exactly. This is like, like the number milk of all... is lactose free, right? Wow. Yeah. Uh, they added DNA to the what? <laughs> wow. Holy crap. You know, just when you didn't think that you had anything on your bingo card left, we are now into silk producing milk goats. That is a whole different. It was a genetic experiment. So these were awesome. these were 100% GMO goats. There's there's what are, nothing... I need some like GMO snails and like I could get some big honking snail and then that's a lot of protein according to Google then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, monster. Yeah, put the snail with some radiation or something like that. Have it yeah. get bitten by a radioactive spider or something. And <laughs> Pre you know, prepping says we jumped the shark on this. <laughs> shark. That's funny. It, it's, I think that's the name of our of our stream. Is just yeah. it's, you know prep talk live dot 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 jumping yeah, the shark. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh my god! I, I got nothing left. I got. I don't know where to go after this. Yeah, I like the idea of uh, of prep talk live bingo cards. I think that's a, a great idea. There's that is, you know what? I think we might have to make those. I think, I think just yeah, you could do it for the different channels. Like every channel could have their own bingo card that you play. Uh, I think it's funny, like <laughs> poop right. joke, uh, Legos. So, yeah, there's different things we can have. Yeah, on. we have to get like a list of things and then mix them up. I wonder if there's like a bingo card generator that we could put like certain words in. I bet yeah, there, is. there probably All is. Right. It I says milk chickens. Yeah, so so Charlie, yeah, I think you're right, Charlie, that milk chickens could definitely be a thing. If they can make silk goats or whatever, uh, goats that milk silk, they should have yeah. some, some milk chickens, I think, for sure. Spider goat milk has spider silk protein. Wow. According to Google. Oh, my God. First off, Dr. Dave, thank you so much for providing us with the fact checking on this. This is amazing. This is, I've, uh, I've learned so much during the stream. And again, this, uh, we've been talking about financial preps the whole time. So it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> we just covered all of the things. Um, uh, Perry prepping was Canadian preppers would be your time is valuable. So I'm not going to wait. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. We don't we don't <laughs> abide by that. We <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I think there's also we something in there like sold on CanadianPreparedness.com. Like yes. that needs to be a thing on his. Um, yeah, okay, I got it. And someday we'll have we'll have the Mountain House snails. Like you can get the number ten can of snails from Mountain House, and that'd be cool <laughs> with the GMO snails. Exactly the bougie. It's it's mountain house, but it's more of like resort house. That would be really bougie, bougie perhaps if you had like some kind of silk uh, shirt that's made from goat milk, like or whatever. However, that works. Uh, that that's a bougie prep, I think too. That's that's a whole different thing. I think. I think if you have a goat milk silk shirt, then <laughs> then you have a whole different perspective on things that I don't I don't know about. Yeah. Um, let's see another Iowa YouTuber. Um, uh, uh, brought what? them for us was with a third person and they were part of our day hike lunch it's on video but what what was it what what they bring I don't... yeah what did they bring uh and then i see for... someone else saying that we so my uncle used to milk male turkeys for breeding Okay, Those but here's I really really liked my what oh jeez. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, was, you got me. Jeez, who was that? I it was Pony Girl. Pony Girl, you, you tricked Pony me. Pony Girl came in oh, MVP man. award. Jeez. MVP award in the chat for Pony Girl. Um, oh, she got I walked into it. Oh man, you really me. did, and I don't Lost. even know like like I, I trust, was, I trust and funny I, girl. I trust funny girl, no, and I just but, read whatever she writes. And here's then she what's got happened. Me the, yeah. Here's what's happened. Our chat has gotten to know us, and they are part of this now. They're and like, it is just <laughs> we're like Ron expansion. Burgundy, where we just read whatever's on. The chat. Yeah, exactly. We just, <laughs> you just read whatever's on the prompt. <laughs> Do not write something for top. You'll read it exactly on the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Modern day prepper. Gobble, gobble, huh? 
Uh, yeah, maybe a gobble a... gobble. Huh, I don't know. It's a thing. Um, yeah, our, okay. our, uh, our improv uh, live streams on, <laughs> again, I think it's funny that whoever watches this, they're going to, they're going to look for financial preparedness tips and tricks and they're yeah. go, or they're going to jump the shark and go off the deep. And they're like, what the yeah. heck is that? It's going to have to be like, okay, there's going to be like prep talk live with Cascadia dispatch financial preparedness top for real now or something yeah. like that. I cannot like, believe oh, that Tony girl got me so bad. That's a, geez. that was amazing. Oh, Man. look. And now we've got turkeys in the chat. Um, so yeah this is i feel like we're gonna end it there because yeah how, how do we uh, <laughs> there's no coming back where do that. we go from there yeah yeah exactly uh to the barn i think i don't yeah. know um anyway thanks everybody for joining us yeah, we appreciate times. it That's, uh this has next been the Wednesday, highlight of my day for sure so we do what we can for you yeah. it's all yeah. it's just tup's world and we're all trying my, to help my work my work calls are never this exciting <laughs> yeah, they don't go to these topics <laughs> Yeah, I'm get looking, that market looking, money next. and we'll just make it happen. So, yeah, so anyways, next, next week, let's see, am I good? I think I should be good. Well, maybe. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll we'll figure it out. Talk. If not, we'll, we'll have my people thing. talk to your people. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the, your turkeys will talk to my snails and we'll figure yep. it out and we'll make it all happen. So anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. We will see you later. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, do all the things, share it with your family, tell everybody about it. Have a wonderful uh, Halloween if you're going to be doing Halloween-y things. If you're not, have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week. Talk to you later.